All right, math one features practice. So, um, if you're watching this, hopefully you had some time to watch it before the quiz. If you're doing it at home, that's great too. Um, I'm going to go through this fairly quick. That way it won't take as much time, hopefully. So, you can use it to kind of check, make sure you're prepared. So, we'll start with end behavior. Remember, end behavior, just want to know where's my graph going as I go left or as I go right. Okay, so as I go to the right, the furthermost point, that y value is where I'm headed. As I go left, that y value is where I'm headed, number seven. Okay, now we'll do rate of change. So first thing with rate of change is I find those x values. So x of negative six, so my point is right there on the graph at negative six. My other x value is five, okay, which is right there. Find the slope. Well, I go to the right 11, and I don't go up or down, so that's 0 over 11, which is just 0. So my rate of change is 0. Okay, y-intercept, where is it crossing the y-axis? See it right there, we'll call that 0, 3. x-axis, x-intercepts, does not cross the x-axis at all, so we have none. Maximum, my highest point, is right there. So that's negative 7, positive 8. My minimum, the lowest point, there's two of them, here and here. So that's negative 6, 1, and 5, 1. My domain, remember, now we're doing intervals. So my domain starts right here, goes on this graph. So it goes to right there, jumps over to this one, so it starts up right there, follows along that one, then jumps to this one, goes to here. So those x values are negative 13 to negative 7, jumps to negative 6, positive 5, then 7 to 12. So I write that as negative 13 to negative 7, then a jump. A union we call it, 6 to 5, and then another jump, 7 to 12. Now remember, range deals with our y value, so our lowest point is here at 1, and it goes up to 4. This one's within that zone, so we don't need to deal with it. Stops, takes a jump up at 5, and then goes up to 8. So 1 to 4, then 5 to 8. So our range would be... 1 to 4, then jumps, 5 to 8. Okay, now we're going to do the interval of increasing. So we've got quite a few intervals that increase. Here's one, a second, and a third. So the first one, negative 10 to negative 7. Then it jumps. Second one, negative 6 to negative 2. And it jumps, and that last one is 7 to 12. Okay, so there's my intervals of increasing. Decreasing just has 2. So from negative 13 to 10, negative 10. And then it jumps. And then from negative 2 to positive 5. Now, it's positive, always positive, always above the x-axis, so that's the same as domain. I'm just going to write here same as domain. Okay, and negative, it's never negative. All right, so there's the first one. Hopefully you did it well. If not, hopefully you found your mistakes. Okay, hopefully you're not using the y values when you should be using x values. Okay, and hopefully you're not swapping where the zeros are here. Okay. All right, let's take a look at number three now. I guess the way I had to do it, that's really number one, but it's one and two. So this is really number two. Okay, so end behavior, we've got left and then right. So as we go to the right, looks like it stops right here at negative five. As we go to the left, notice we have that arrow, 
and it's going down to the negative infinity end zone. So as we go left, it goes to negative infinity. Okay, rate of change. We go to negative 2. Negative 2, our graph is right up there. Positive 4, our graph is right here. So that goes down 1, 2, 3. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 3 over 6, which can reduce to negative 1 half for our rate of change. Okay, y-intercept, pretty easy to see where it crosses the y-axis. Make sure it's 0, 5, not 5, 0. Okay, then x-intercepts. So we've got one here at negative 5. So this time it's negative 5, 0 for x-intercepts. We have a second one that's a little past. We'll call it 4.75. If you did 4.5 or even 5, I would accept those as well. Okay. All right, maximum highest point is right here, and that's 6, negative 2, so negative 2 for the x, 6 for the y. The minimum, because this keeps going down, it doesn't have one. Okay, technically this would be a relative minimum, but we're not worried about relative minimums right now. Now domain and range. Okay, so the x values, if I start here at 6, and then when I go left, I'm going to keep going, aren't I? So when I keep going, that's our end zone over here. So that'd be negative infinity because it's left to 6. So my domain, negative infinity to 6. My range, because that keeps going down, this is going to go down to negative infinity and then goes up to 6. So negative infinity to 6 again. All right. Now... Where is it increasing? So it starts down here at negative infinity, and it increases till it hits right there. So from negative 2, and it keeps going to the left. But we always start with the left number, so it's increasing from ne oh, negative infinity to negative 2. Then we decrease down here, so from negative 2 to positive 4, we're decreasing, right? Negative 2 to positive 4. And then, oh, we're still decreasing, aren't we? Until we get to 6. So, even though it's a different rate, it still is one interval. All right. How's it coming along? Hopefully we're doing pretty good on these. Had quite a bit of notes, plenty of practice, hopefully. Okay, positive. So from negative 5 to that other x-intercept of 4.75, that's where we're positive. Negative 5 to 4.75. So for negative, okay, well we start here at negative 5, and it's going to keep going to negative infinity is negative. So we start, let's make a better parenthesis, a negative infinity, and we go till we get to negative 5. Then we jump, we start at 5, and go till we get to 6, being in under the x-axis. And there's our second one. Okay, now 5 and 6 are just calculating rate of change. So, if it's linear, like number 5, find the slope. That's your rate of change. If you don't believe me, okay, we take the x values, the second one, subtract the first one, Give me 4. That goes at the bottom of our fraction. Then I plug them in. So I go f of 4 equals 3 fourths times 4 minus 10. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 minus 10 is negative 7. So we would have something minus a negative 7. Then we would go f of 8 equals 3 over 4 times 8 minus 10. So 3 times 8 is 24 divided by 4. 24 divided by 4 is 6. 6 minus 10 would give us negative 4. So I had negative 4 minus a negative 7, which that's like plus. Negative 4 plus 7 is a positive 3. That number goes on the top. Same thing. Okay, number six, same idea. 
0 and 50, so I go to the second minus the first. So that gives me my bottom number, k of my fraction. Then I have to figure it out. So f of 0 would equal negative 4 times 0 plus 56. So that would be 0 plus 56, so we get 56. So 56 right here with the 0. That's f of 0, I should say. Then we have f of 50 equals negative 4 times 50 plus 56. Negative 4 times 50 is going to give us negative 200, plus 56 is negative 144. No. Yes. So negative 144 minus 56 is negative 200 again. Negative 200 divided by 50 gives me negative 4, which this was linear again. See, same thing. So there's a shortcut you can use on linear functions. All right. Let's keep on trucking. So in behavior, left, as this graph goes left, it's hitting that y-intercept, and it's 13. So our y-intercept is 0, 13. I know I'm going quick. Right. As we go to the right, that's a positive 14 right there. So, positive 14. Okay. All right. Our rate of change, 34 at 34. That's our end point. And at 14, that's that point right down there. So we go up 1. Actually, that's up 2, isn't it? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And we're over 2 again, 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So, vertical over horizontal, 12 over 20. That would be 3 over 5 if we reduce. So, rate of change, 3 over 5. Because we like to reduce. Alright, no x-intercepts, so none. Maximum, our highest point looks to be right about there. So it looks like it's 31 and about 14 and a half. We'll call that. Okay, our minimum, our lowest point right there, which is 14 and 2. Our domain, furthest left we go is 0 continuous till it hits 34, so 0 to 34. Our range, lowest is 1, highest we said was about 14.5, so 1, oh, 2 to 14.5, sorry. Okay. Now, you probably notice it's all, all positive, so that's the same as the domain, which would be 0 to 34, making negative the empty set, or never. Okay, decreasing starts at 0, decreases till we hit that minimum of 14, so 0 to 14. So, 0 to 14, and we're, we think we're done decreasing, but we're actually not. Then we increase till we hit that maximum, so from 14 to... 31, we're increasing, and then we're back to decreasing till we get to 34. So that jump, 31 to 34. Whew. We're knocking this out quick, aren't we? All right, now it looks like we have a dotted line, okay, but it does look exponential. So let's attack it. So end behavior. So we go left. Now, it looks like, okay, remember exponential functions have that asymptote. Looks like the asymptote is here at 1, so it never reaches 1, but that's what it's approaching. As we go right, looks like it's just going to keep going up and up and up, so we call that infinity. So now this one is kind of interesting because it actually doesn't have a maximum or a minimum because it keeps getting so, so, so very close to 1 but never to 1. But it never stops. None of that seems mathematically weird. But that's the situation. Okay. Maximum. 
goes up to infinity, so none. I guess you could write infinity, but that's technically not appropriate. No x-intercepts, because it's never going to get down there. Y-intercept of 0, 2. Make sure the zero's first. Now, rate of change. So an x value of 0 right here, an x value of 2 right up there. So we go up 1, 2, 3, to the right, 2. So rate of change, 3 over 2. Now my domain, okay, so I have x's and they're going to keep going left, I have x's that are going to keep going right, so end zone to end zone, Woo! racking up the points there, so it would be negative infinity to positive infinity. Range, however, it's never going to go below 1, actually never touch 1, but it will keep going up to end zone, so that's like, you know, punt receiving right there off the 1 yard line, so... We can do a bracket here and go 1 to positive infinity. So technically, because it never hits 1, we could do a parenthesis as well. Okay, now as we go left to right, it's always increasing, so it's never decreasing. Um, but it's going to be the same as the domain, negative infinity to positive infinity. It's positive all the time, negative infinity to positive infinity, so it's never negative again. So, we kind of like those, uh, those ones, don't we? Make things a lot easier for us. All right, there we go for now. Let's take a look now at some rate of, more rate of change. All right, so we've got our rate of change from 24 to 48. So I go 48 minus 24, which gives me 24 for my x. That's the bottom of our fraction of our rate of change. Then we go 240 minus 60, which would give us 180. So we get 180 over 24. Now we could reduce that. And if we reduce that, we could get um, 30 over 4, which we could reduce to 15 over 2, or 7.5. Okay? All right, number 12, so we go 2 to 5, so 5 minus 2 would give us a difference there of 3. 121 over 30 would give us a difference of 91. So we'd have 91 over 3, which I don't think we can reduce that one further. All right, so now let's take a look at this next one. So we start with our end behavior. Okay, as I'm going left, my graph is going right up there to number 2. And as I'm going right, looks like we're going to about mm, one-third, we'll say. Okay, now rate of change um, from negative 10 to negative 2. So negative 10 would be up here at 2. And negative 2 would be right here at 0. So we go down 2 to the right 8. So it would be negative 2 over 8 or negative 1 over 4 for our rate of change. Okay, for our y-intercept, pretty easy. We can see that right here at 0, 1. For our x-intercepts, we've got negative 2, 0. And it looks like negative 0.5, 0 as well. For our maximum, our highest point is right here at 3, 7. For our minimum, our lowest point here at negative 1, negative 1. Our domain, right, all those x values. Okay, we start here at negative 10, and we keep going until we get here at 6. So... Domain is negative 10 to 6. Our range, we start down here at negative 1, and then we go up till we get to 7. So negative 1 to 7. Okay. Now where we're increasing. Okay, it looks like we start out here at negative 10, and we're decreasing, decreasing, decreasing till we hit negative 1. So that interval right there. So that's decreasing from negative 10 to negative 1. 
then we're increasing from negative 1, right? We're increasing till we hit 3. So increasing from negative 1 to 3. And then we're back down to decreasing from that 3 till we get to 6. So we jump and we go 3 to 6 here. Okay. Now, positive and negative, the majority of it's positive, we can see here. So we're positive till we hit that negative 2, so negative 10 to negative 2, we're positive. Then we go negative from that 2 till that negative 0.5, so negative 2 to negative 0.5. And then we jumped back to positive at negative 0.5, and we're positive the rest of the way, from that negative 0.5 to 6. Okay, so there's our positive intervals and our negative interval. Alright, now let's take a look at the table. So, same concepts here, just on the table format. So, my end behavior is I go left, so my left is my smallest number. I'm approaching 10. As I go right, my biggest number is 12, and that's also going to 10. So our rate of change from 6 to 10. So we go 6 to 10, so that difference is 4. Then 4 to 0, that's also 4. So it would be 4 over 4, or 1 for our rate of change. Okay. So now, y-intercept, we find where the x is 0, and that point is the y-intercept, so 0, 10 here. x-intercepts, we find where the y is 0, so at 6, 0, that's our x-intercept. Okay, maximum, we look for the highest, biggest y-value. We actually have two of them, so 0, 10, and 12, 10. For minimum, we look at that lowest point. And 6, 0 is our lowest point. Okay, then remember with the domain and range here, we think more in terms of each specific number. The domain is these, so it would be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And the range would be all the y values. So it would be 10, 7. Actually, we go smallest to biggest, don't we? So I should start out 0, then 3. We have two of them, but I only need to write 1. Then 4, then 7, then 10. Okay. And there's our range. Now, for increasing, remember, we look at, for increasing and decreasing, we look at our numbers. So 10 to 7 is decreasing. 7 to 3, decreasing. 3 to 0, decreasing. So from 0 to 6, we're decreasing. Then we are increasing the rest of the way. So from 6 to 12, we're now increasing. And they're all positive. So from 0 to 12, we're positive. And so negative, we're never negative. Or we do that empty set. All right, two more problems, but we're using the same table for rate of change. So 0, 4. So 4 minus 0 is 4, so there's our bottom on this one. And that's uh, 554.61 and 500. So 554.61 minus 500 would be 54.61. Okay. So 54.61 divided by 4 would give us, and that gives me about 13.65. Now I do 2 to 8, so 2 to 8, 8 minus 2 would give me 6, so 6 on the bottom, then 615.19 minus 526.60. So just using a calculator I can do that, and uh, I get 88.59, divide that by 6, we get a rate of change about 14.77. Alrighty. Oh. So, last few. Our left end behavior. Smallest number. 
It's approaching 55.5. Our right hand behavior, biggest number, 10. It's approaching 56. Rate of change, negative 8 to 0. So 0 minus negative 8 would be a difference of 8. Then 53.33 minus 52 would be um, 1.33. So 1.33 divided by 8 would give us a rate of change of about 0.166. Okay. Now y-intercept, where we have 0, there's our y-intercept, so 0, 53.33. Okay, there's no zero on the right side, so there's no x-intercepts. Our biggest point is, our highest point looks to be 60.05. So our maximum is 2, uh, 60.05. Our minimum, lowest point, looks to be here at 50, so negative 650. Okay. Then our domain and range, our domain, remember, is just the left side. So it's all those numbers, negative 10, negative 8, negative 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 6, and 10. And our range is all the y values. I um, guess we should start with the smallest, 50, then 52, 53.33. 55.5, I'm going to run out of space, um, oh, out of 55 before, 55.5, 55.5, 56, 57, 58, and 60.05. Okay, so um, increasing and decreasing. So, 55 to 52, it's decreasing to 50, decreasing, then it's increasing, 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 decreasing, decreasing, increasing. So, we start out decreasing until we get to 50, so it's decreasing from negative 10 to negative 6, then it's increasing from negative 6 until we hit 60. So negative 6 to 2, it's increasing. Then it's decreasing from 2 to 6. So it jumps, then 2 to 6. And then it's increasing from 6 to 10. All right. All right, now these are all positive numbers. So there's no negative numbers. But for the positive, it goes from negative 10 to positive 10. All right, last uh, table. So left end behavior uh, is 12. Right end behavior is 0. Rate of change, negative 1 to 1. 1 minus a negative 1 would give us 2. Negative 12 minus negative 12 would give us 0. 0 over 2 gives us a rate of change of 0, which happens. Okay, our y-intercept. We've got one right here, so 0, negative 18. It's our y-intercept, our x-intercept. Looks like we have two zeros here, so we have two of them. Negative 3 and positive 3. And I'm almost out of time, aren't I? Okay. So, um, I'm going to have to go kind of quick here on these ones, and to give us time to do the last ones, I'm just going to hurry and fill out the last one. All right, so we can see max, min, um, domain, range, increasing, decreasing, positive and negative. The weird thing about um, this positive, this 3, 0, it's not positive or negative, it's just 0, so we didn't include that one, okay? All right, so for the last three, 30 minutes, okay, remember on these ones we... Go the x values, 2 minus 0, and then I plug those in for f of x, and then I solve them, okay, like this. So, we go 2 minus 0 equals 2, that's our bottom number. We plug in 0 and 2, and we get 149 minus 5 equals 144, we get 72. And here we go with the last one, 